Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Jordan arrived at the hospital and discovered Laura, Sam, and Olivia. Olivia notified Jordan that Dante was still in surgery, and Jordan informed them that the search for the shooter was continue, with the FBI involved. Olivia knew Dante would be fine, but she wanted whoever had shot him to be imprisoned forever. Brooke Lynn came at the hospital and discovered Chase. He was glad to see her, yet he felt helpless and wished he could do something. Jordan approached Chase, who had opted to go donate blood. When he left, Brooke Lynn was concerned, wondering if Jordan had been in a similar scenario. More than once, and it was a nightmare every time, she said. Brooke Lynn expressed a fear for Chase, and Jordan reminded her to always be honest with him about her thoughts. When Kylie arrived at the Quartermain estate, Drew stated that he was looking after Danny and Rocco for Sam. Just then, the boys emerged from the living room, squabbling over a portable game that Rocco had damaged. Rocco vanished, and Danny stated that Rocco only wanted his father. Drew's phone rang, and he answered it for Sam, who called to check on the boys. He confessed that Rocco needed a hug. Sam praised him for remaining, and she told him that aid was on its way. When Sam hung up the phone, she approached Laura and requested a favor. Olivia became concerned about the absence of news, but Sam knew Dante would not give up. Chase rejoined Brooke Lynn, telling her that donating blood had helped him clear his mind. Portia approached and informed the group that Dante's procedure was proceeding well. She went on to say that despite the extensive injury, his vitals were in good condition. Sam and Olivia wished Dante had been something other than a cop, but they knew it made him happy more than anything. Jordan met Portia, and they discussed what a terrific man Dante was. Jordan was reminded of Nathan, whose life had been cut short in the line of duty. She mentioned that everyone who wore the badge was a hero in her eyes. Chase liked Brooke Lynn's company, but he encouraged her to go home and sleep. He acknowledged, this isn't what you signed up for. Brooke Lynn acknowledged to being terrified for him every day, but she loved him too much to hide her anxiety. He offered her an out, but she made him pledge never to tell her to go. He promised, and they hugged. Portia returned to the group waiting for Dante and informed them that he was being transferred to the ICU following his surgery. She said that he was in serious condition, but the surgeons were confident that they had corrected all of the damage. Olivia wondered if he would recover, and Portia said it was a huge step in the right direction. Chase, relieved, asked Brooke Lynn what he could do for her in exchange for her overnight support. Take me home, she said, and they departed. Jordan followed Portia away as Olivia emphasized Dante's fighting ability. Olivia and Sam had a heartfelt embrace. Laura arrived at the Quartermain mansion, and Rocco inquired about Dante. Laura said that Dante has the best physicians working on him. Drew excused himself to take a call, and Laura and Danny entered the living room. Carly checked in with Danny, who said he was well. Carly mentioned how much Danny was like Jason. She informed him that it was fine for him to express his thoughts and that he was exactly where he needed to be with Rocco. Laura brought up Rocco's broken video bane in the living room, which sparked a discussion regarding video banes. He was amazed that his grandma played them and he recommended that they play them together once Dante recovered. Laura invited him to chat about Dante, but he declined. She reassured him that it was fine to feel terrified, as she was, but they needed to remain hopeful. She hugged him and promised to be there for him for however long he needed. Drew returned shortly after, and Laura said that she and Rocco had planned a video game date for themselves and Dante. Laura recommended that Rocco join her and Kevin for a sleepover, but Rocco preferred to stay in case Scout awoke afraid. Laura believed it was a good sign Rocco wanted to look after Scout when she saw him in the foyer a few minutes later. When Laura left, Carly descended the stairs and convinced Drew that Scout was asleep. She excused herself to unwind at home after a long day. Drew praised her for her assistance with the boys. He kissed her and she departed. Rocco sat in the living room, looking at a photo of Dante on his phone. 
Danny sat next to him, and Rocco pushed closer. In the hospital chapel, a stunned Sonny noticed Jason on the video and reasoned that any digital recording may be modified. Ava informed him that Spinelli had authenticated the footage. Looking at all of the evidence, Ava concluded that Jason was working against Sonny, but Sonny refused to believe it. She reminded him that the man behind the whole operation went by Stone, which was part of Spinelli's nickname for Jason, Stone Cold. She reasoned that he knew Jason better than she did, therefore she would trust his judgment. She made him vow to be careful, and he found it amusing because she was obviously the only person he could trust. Spinelli complained about seeing a dead man walking in the tape, which he eventually showed Maxie. They had little time to be astonished since there was a loud knock on the door. Jagger announced that the FBI had a search warrant. Spinelli let him in, insisting that Maxie had no involvement in anything. Jagger requested to see Spinelli's film from the night, but he showed him the computer, which displayed no footage available. A few minutes later, Spinelli and Maxie were both handcuffed, and he insisted on her following his lead. Maxie revealed to Jagger that her stepfather was Mac, who admired Jagger. Jagger apologized for taking so long to recognize her and encouraged her to inform Mac that he regretted arresting Mac's daughter for obstruction of justice. Jagger also threatened to call Felicia, but Maxie begged him not to. She told Spinelli that Felicia would undoubtedly be happy of them for supporting their buddy, who had saved their lives numerous times. Spinelli refused to let Maxie go to jail for something he did, so he alerted Jagger that there was a copy of his drone footage on the backup disk. Jagger grabbed the drive and requested the password. Spinelli responded that the password was Maximista, much to Maxie's pleasure. Maxie couldn't believe they'd handed over their friend to the FBI, but Spinelli explained that he had a legitimate cause for his actions. He needed to keep her out of jail. You're the woman I love, he stated, and they kissed. A few minutes later, Jagger looked at Jason's video clip on his phone. Another agent asked what they planned to do with Spinelli. Jagger said that they had achieved what they wanted, and now were going after Jason Morgan. Editors independently choose all of the products and services displayed. However, Soaps.com may earn a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the merchant may obtain certain auditable data for financial reporting. Over the duration of Steve Burton's runs, as Jason on General Hospital, the character has had various loves, including Karen and Keisha as children, Robin and Sam, Elizabeth and Courtney. But now that he's back from the dead, for the third time if you consider the period when we thought Drew had raised him from the grave, the direction in which he's going to travel romantically is evident. Britt will push up daisies, and Carly will be the lucky lady. Think about it. Who did Jason turn to for help after being shot? Carly. Who was the first person to whom he disclosed himself? Carly. Who was he confident would hide him from the authorities if necessary, and some hiding was required? Carly. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.